There are plenty of important decisions to be made this season, the likes of Saquon Barkley, T. Higgins, Baker Mayfield. Dan, let's start there in Tampa. They really have some tough decisions to make among three of their stars, actually. What do we need to know heading into tomorrow? Well, I think sometimes, Hannah, this comes down to the cost. And Baker Mayfield, the quarterback, would cost about $36 million for the Buccaneers to franchise, uh, which makes it, I think, unlikely that they do that. More likely that they try and work out a long-term deal with him or explore other options on the quarterback market, much the way they did last year when they landed on Baker Mayfield. So look for the Bucs to try and keep Baker, but probably not franchise him. And I could say the same thing about wide receiver Mike Evans. Because of the rules of how the franchise tags are calculated and how much money Evans made on his previous contract, his franchise tag would be over $28 million uh, if the Buccaneers decided to use it on him. That's significantly more than the wide receiver franchise tag uh, would normally be, uh, again, for reasons tied to his previous uh, contract. Look at safety Antoine Winfield uh, and about a $16 million tag as the more likely candidate for Tampa Bay. The Cincinnati Bengals have T. Higgins eligible for free agency. He is a strong candidate for the franchise tag as the Bengals work to keep the group around Joe Burrow together as long as possible before Burrow's cap numbers start going up significantly in future years. Higgins would love a contract extension, and it's possible the Bengals find a way to give him one. But if they can't, I would, be, I would expect them to franchise him to make sure he doesn't leave the building. And you will not see the Vikings use the franchise tag on quarterback Kirk Cousins. That's because his deal does not void until right before the league year, which is after the deadline for franchising players. That's a little trick that uh, got put in the contract to make sure they couldn't franchise him. The Vikings will spend the next couple weeks trying to work out a long-term deal with Cousins. If they can't, they'll move on. That could mean the draft. It could mean another option in free agency. But then Cousins would be a free agent and free to sign anywhere else. Could be an option for Tampa Bay or Atlanta or Vegas or any of those teams that are looking for quarterbacks. And it certainly bears remembering how well he was playing before he tore his Achilles in week eight. Cousins had some of the best numbers in the NFL. He was tied with Tua Tungavailoa for the most touchdowns in the NFL, and he was second to Tua at that point in passing yards. So, Mike T., let's put your GM hat back on. What would you do with Kirk Cousins also knowing that you have Justin Jefferson's contract to worry about? Hannah, you have to get him signed to an extension. And as we talked about before the show, give him a big signing bonus, prorate it out to lower the cap number. Look, he's 36 years old. That's not ideal. But when you juxtapose his performance, which you just laid out, compare it with the 11th pick, which is likely somebody like J.J. McCarthy or maybe Bo Nix from Oregon, clearly Kirk Cousins is the better player. The big three of Jaden Daniels. Drake May and Kayla Williams will be long gone. So I think the Vikings would be well served to hold on to Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins, give them long term deals, and that's their nucleus going forward. Clearly, that's their best option. If not, I think Kirk Cousins looks at Atlanta, he looks at Pittsburgh, and I think he'll be gone really quick despite the injury because he's been so productive. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think there's even any need or reason for Kirk Cousins to look anywhere outside of Minnesota, especially if they'll have him back. I mean, think about the, the I think about the competence that he has at receiver. Yes, you talk about Justin Jefferson, one of the most prolific receivers in the entire NFL, but then also young players like Jordan Addison had 10 touchdowns this last season. So when it comes to competence, when it comes to confidence, when it comes to culture, it seems as if Kirk Cousins has it all here in Minnesota. Then on the flip side of that, Minnesota may say, okay, well, maybe we go get a guy in, in the draft or maybe we try and figure out a young quarterback and clear some cap space. But why would you want to do that when you know you're going to have a good defense led by Brian Flores and right. you know you also have those competent and dominant receivers, especially with Justin Jefferson, if you can sign him to a long-term deal. And so for me, I don't think this is a situation where you want to look to the draft to, the draft to get a quarterback. You have your quarterback who's putting up not only best numbers around the league, those were career numbers for Kirk Cousins to, the, to that point. Play day games, if you extrapolate that for the entire season, those would have been a career numbers when it comes to touchdown passes. And so he's playing his best ball. He has great, uh, he's the culture of the team. There's confidence there. And you have a, an opportunity in the NFC North, and I get it. The Lions made the playoffs, they're surging. The Packers found their quarterback. But it's a division that's very winnable. You have your quarterback, now's not the time to start over. Yeah, there's a lot about Minnesota that appeals to Kirk Cousins. Uh, not to mention, by the way, he's raising his family there. He and they like living there. Uh, I think that that is a very appealing destination. But as we have learned over the years with Kirk Cousins, 
the deal has to be right. And if they can't reach a deal uh, that makes both sides happy, then I do think they go their separate ways. This is going to unfold here in the coming weeks. They need to have this taken care of by the time his contract voids on March 13th, because at that point, $28.5 million of dead money hits their cap if they don't have an extension done with Kirk Cousins at that point. That would make it difficult for them to do the Jefferson deal. It would make them difficult to keep mm -hmm. Daniil Hunter, defensive end, also eligible for free agency. So the Vikings have a lot of work to do, but the first thing they need to do is figure out if Kirk Cousins is going to be their quarterback or if they have to find some other solution there. You know, and back to Sam's point, he threw 18 touchdowns in those first eight games last year. That's the most he's ever had in the first eight games of a season in his entire career. <laughs>